some verses from Matthew and then Revelation. Ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive and anyone who seeks will find and the door will be open to him who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? Or would you give him a snake when he asks for a fish? Bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and of the teachings of the prophets. Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into his house and eat with him, and he will eat with me. Today's message is about openness, and I wonder, I'm pretty sure you've had experiences in your life that have changed your attitude to the world. I, in spite of the trousers and the shirt, are quite shy and retiring. <laughs> and I remember being at a workshop, sitting next to a vivacious South African lady with whom I had great chemistry and rapport until she said, would you dance with me here in front of the whole group? Everything inside me that was British <laughs> rose up and I politely declined her invitation. But God was not finished with me. Driving home to Dorset, I heard this song for the first time, and it so touched my heart. It's a song called I Hope You Dance, and I heard it from Leanne Womack first. The final verse says, I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope that one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I am going goosebumpy now just with the memory, and I so regretted not being open to the opportunity given to me. So if you have an opportunity to dance over this weekend, I hope you will dance. In one of the most famous, infamous stories and disputed love stories about music history, we learn how John Lennon first met and was attracted to Yoko Ono. Becoming open to a connection, becoming open to opportunities which he was formerly closed to. He thought he was being set up to buy some of her art, so he was naturally suspicious. He attended a London exhibition of her art, and one interactive piece provoked, proved to be the turning point in launching their relationship. The work of art required the participant to climb up a ladder to view a tiny word. The word was so small printed on a piece of paper in the ceiling, you needed a magnifying glass to see it, one word. Now, if you don't know the story, it's very helpful to pause here and ponder what that, what that word might have been. Love. love, absolutely what I thought. All you need is love. Surely it was love. Does anyone know the story? It was not love. It was yes. It was yes. And that one word changed their relationship. I think today is the day for us to say yes. And to help you, I've been learning a tiny amount of um, British Sign Language. And it's really interesting with our Revelation reading. The uh, British Sign Language I've learned for yes is three knocks. 
and a nod of your head. So I wonder if you would do that with me? Yes. Behold, I knock at the door. Stand at the door and knock if anyone opens it to me. Isn't that lovely? You can say yes. <laughs> and I thought that would become a secret sign between us when your friends and family and colleagues and partner catches you saying no when you could be saying yes to the dance. Maybe that could be a secret sign between us. <laughs> to say yes. The Folk Festival is about sounding out a loud, courageous, bold, bodacious yes to life. Life to the full, life in all its abundance, life to the max. The Folk Festival is about saying an inclusive yes to one another and yes to the invitation to dance. The Folk Festival is about saying yes and amen to God, who is love, to the God who is light, to the God who makes all things new. In this difficult week, God makes all things new and invites us to dance with him. So today, I don't want to leave you only with a thought, a word, a dream. I'd like to add three signs. So that's yes. Let me see that no. And open and closed. And the one I really liked, that there were several options in British Sign Language, but the one I really captured my heart is to open your hands like doors. So open. And then closed was like closing a swing bridge or putting a lid on the box. So let's talk about, yes, being open and closed. Secret signs amongst us now as friends. When saying yes and staying open to life feels so good, why would we ever become closed? The history of the incarnation hinges on the courage of one woman to say yes to God from an open heart. Just consider all the reasons Mary could and even should have been closed to God's gracious, surprising but shocking invitation. Consider the behaviour of others towards a mother with child, this early on in her engagement with Joseph. Village life does not deal favourably with scandal, though I suspect it rather likes it. Swanage certainly does. <laughs> Consider Mary's possible and realistic fear that no one would believe her story. Who would believe her story? Consider Mary's possible and logical fear of rejection from Joseph. Consider her potential loss of respect from all who knew and loved her. And I think we can go further and consider the danger to her very life herself. Yet, instead of becoming closed to the greatest opportunity in history, shrouded by risks, Mary kept an open heart. A heart open to God. She said, yes. Yes to life, yes to God, yes to possibilities that transcend normal experience. Mary said, behold the servant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. Mary caught the dream, the vision, the hope and said yes. When we say yes to God, redemption is possible. When we say yes to God, we say yes to hope and new beginnings. What would cause us then to become closed instead? I think I know your heart. Disappointment, discouragement, even depression and grief are powerful barriers to yes, to close us down. We become closed and stay closed to protect ourselves from further pain. Fear of loss, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. So what's closing you down? Because today God wants you to open up to something new, something fresh. Self-interest misunderstood can keep us closed to what would truly free us. Jesus declared to those who close down, they lose their lives and liberty. He said, for whoever desires to save their lives will lose them, and whoever will lose their life for my sake will find it. There are more ways to close down 
My favourite is unforgiveness. As soon as we decide, we choose not to forgive, that's a powerful way to close and stay closed. Have you ever met or perhaps been the incredible sulk? (laughs) Somebody's offended you and you sulk. How open are you to life then? Just doesn't happen, does it? And then there's the strange stuff that can't buy me love, to quote Mr. Lennon. Materialism and money is a strange blessing that can close us down. As I'm becoming more aware of how many people fight and squabble over their inheritances, I can see how the love of money is a root of all kinds of becoming closed to being open to future relationships. When we have more than enough, it can be tempting to build barriers instead of bridges and to sit out the dance. On the other hand, to be open is to, get, to be open to give is to become open to live life abundantly. And I'm going to read you some lyrics from Mike Scott's amazing song, liberating song, which is called Open. And like the Houses of Parliament, I would like just a little murmur if you agree with these. (laughs) For example, if you are open to the world. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, that's that's the perfect level there. (laughs) Open to the world. Mm-hmm. Open to spirit. Mm-hmm. Open to the changing wind. Mm-hmm. It's quite long. Open to touch. Mm-hmm. Open to nature. Mm-hmm. Open to the world within. Mm-hmm. Open to change. Yes. Open to adventure. Mm-hmm. Open to the new. Open to love. Open to miracles. Open, beloved, to you. Open to learn. Open to laughter. Open to being blessed. Open to joy. And like Her Majesty, open to service. Mm -hmm. Open to saying yes. Open to risk, yes. Open to passion, to peace and silence too. Open to love, open to beauty, open, beloved, to you. Our festival is a crossroads, a choice point to say no or yes, to be closed or open. Will you say yes to life today? You know what to do, eh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can say yes and amen. Will you say yes to one another today? Will you say yes to God? Because, behold, he stands at the door and knocks. Amen. He is among us, the one who went up to the mountain top to pray with his friends where he revealed his glory before the journey to the cross. To a place where land meets sky, where earth meets heaven, a place of meeting, of mists, of voices, of conversations and a place of listening. He is among us, the one who gave sight to the blind and insight to the closed-minded, the one who opened the ears of the deaf and opened the ears of those who heard only their own voices, the one who healed the sick and helped the hopeless, who agreed with fair taxation and handled money, the one who was criticised for coming too close to the contaminated, who spoke for the poor and spoke to the privileged of the good things their money could do. The one who entrusted himself to women, as much to men without prejudice or favour. He is among us. To heal, to touch, to bless, to inspire, to to excite, to offer us opportunities, to confront, to convert, 
to show at all times the human face of God. He is among us, the one who stands at the door. Loving Father, open our minds to experience your presence. Open our mouths to speak your wisdom. Open our hearts to extend your love. Open our hands to serve you generously and open our whole being to all you have to offer. We do not live on mountaintops, but we too would glimpse your glory in the ordinary days of our lives and in the community of your Son in which you have chosen to dwell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you now our Queen, her whole life dedicated to others, as grief runs deep, we give grateful thanks for her faith, dignity, graciousness, humility, and her steadfast loyalty, which has helped us make sense of who we are through decades of extraordinary changes in our world, through times of war and hardship, through seasons of upheaval and change, and through moments of joy and celebration. We have been sustained by her faith in what and who we are called to be. You were her anchor. We remember before you now our King and the Royal Family. Draw near to them. Bring them comfort on the road ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You've called us to pray for those in need and we pray for the people whose names the world knows. At this time of uncertainty, we pray for politicians, for wisdom, thoughtfulness, and sensitivity in their actions, and ask that you would guide them to act for others and to do everything for your glory and not for their own. We pray for places in the world where countries are suffering drought, those suffering conflict and those suffering flooding. You know their names and cherish their lives. In the goodness of your constant love, be with the people of Pakistan as they continue to face such hardship. We pray for strength and comfort for those who have lost loved ones, livelihoods, livestock and homes. We pray for the Pakistani government local charities, churches and individuals who endeavour to bring some sense of relief. At this time of great loss, may we be filled with your compassion and move to reach out in love as we stand alongside our sisters and brothers. We pray that they may find strength as they seek safety and courage to carry on. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for our part in the climate crisis. Inspire us all to play our part in protecting the earth, our common home, so that together we may build a world that reflects your glory, where hope drives out despair. We ask you to bless the financial offerings we make today. May it bring some relief. Lord, in your mercy. Bless this our festival, the sense of community we experience, the fellowship it brings for the crazy mixture of people enriching and enlivening our town. We thank you that you have blessed people with gifts in music, dance and song. We thank you for the friendship of strangers, the richness of other cultures and for coming to us in unexpected guises. We pray for the people we encounter this festival, for our brothers and sisters sitting beside us now whom we may not know, but whose names are written on your heart. Open our eyes so that we may recognize the work of your spirit among other people and in different forms, and, in, and should we yet walk in some things in separate ways, then present before us the common goal towards which we travel. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, reveal your presence to us this day. May the brilliance of your face illuminate this place as we dare to proclaim your word. God, who 
who meets us in the broken places shine the light of Christ deep into our lives so that we may carry that light into the darkest of places and point to the one whose brokenness is our salvation. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.